What is 75 feet long, green, and older than a T-Rex? Well, meet Natalie, believed to be a whole new species of dinosaur. Scientists have spent the past decade painstakingly putting this 150 million year old giant back together. And National Geographic cameras documented the entire process. Well, this is a 150 million year old dinosaur, right? So I think you expect not to be in perfect shape, and it isn't. If you look at some of the tail vertebrae here, you're gonna see that some of the spines are a little uh, twisted, they're a little broken, they're somewhat deformed. Wow, and I'm joined now by Dr. Nate Smith. He's the director of the Dinosaur Institute at the LA Natural History Museum, where Natalie will soon be on display. Dr. Smith, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. I love that you're living the dream, because every kid dreams of being a paleontologist. <laughs> Here you are, um, studying dinosaurs. But let's start with her color. Why is she green? Yeah, the color comes from a lot of the mineralogy, and those are much more common. Um, what makes Natalie that green color is a mineral called selatinite, which got concentrated kind of after it was originally fossilized, and that mineral replaced some of the minerals that were already there. And she was found in the Badlands, right, of Utah? Yeah, so the southeast corner of Utah near a town, a tiny little town called Bluff, a really scenic and beautiful part of the United States. And this is like breaking news in the world of dinosaurs. You're calling this a whole new species. Tell us more about that. Right, so some of our researchers are in the process of working that up right now. That kind of takes time um, when you're going to erect and name a new species. Um, it, but it looks like nothing kind of quite fit with the previously described large long neck sauropods from this area. And it kind of is what we might call an in-betweener uh, from a couple of other, other species. Mm. Um, so and that's made the find even more exciting. Take us through the process of excavation to creating this exhibit. Yeah, it's a colossal task, as you can imagine. And in some ways, the funnest part of it is the easiest, you know, finding and, and starting to excavate those bones. Um, what we give a lot of credit to is our technicians and preparator staff here at the Dinosaur Institute and the NHM, because it takes hundreds and thousands of hours to actually excavate these bones from the surrounding rock or matrix. And that's really the limiting factor for us to, to bring these giants back to life. And I envision you in an Indiana Jones hat out there um, excavating away. And I understand that Natalie will go on display this fall. And you had folks vote on her name, and she is Nat Ali for a reason. That's right. It's Natalie with a G. Uh, and that's a shout out to in the early days of the, the work at this quarry. Um, the, the field crew was just relentlessly pestered by flying gnats and biting gnats. Once she goes on display, what will visitors to your uh, August museum get to do when they see the new exhibit? Well, Natalie is very much a community dinosaur, right? It was excavated by a community of folks over you know, more than a dozen years, including students, volunteers, researchers from around the world. Um, it's from BLM land, so it kind of belongs to the community. And it'll be part of a new display in our new NHM Commons Community Center. So everyone will be able to come and see Natalie for free and learn the story about basically what we call a ground to mount. So everything that took place from finding excavating, preparing, studying, uh, and then ultimately putting on display this giant dinosaur. There's another dinosaur fossil that will not be on public display because recently Apex, the largest stegosaurus ever found, was sold to a private collector for nearly $45 million. So how do you feel about these rare specimens being out of public view and out of reach for researchers? It's a challenge, and there's a lot of controversy and debate over it. Um, one of the things a lot of us in the paleontological community are hopeful for is that uh, the, the bidder that uh, purchased Apex has a long history of working with natural history museums and putting those specimens on display and doing a lot of paleontological and uh, museum educational outreach. So our hope is that Apex won't be lost forever to the public and to researchers. And of course, we all hope that everyone will swarm to go see Natalie. Thank you, Dr. Smith, so much for joining us. Thank you for your time. And we're looking forward to having everybody out here in uh, the fall. And we know that Natalie will make her public debut at the LA Natural History Museum this November. Thanks again.